someone did this. It's a new way of doing image to image with stable diffusion, where it seems like it keeps really faithful to the original image and just changes the things you want. Which, if you've done any image to image stuff before, you know that's a huge problem. You know, you like you ask for a woman with curly hair, and it'll give you like a completely different woman in a completely different setting with curly hair. This is really good. It looks really promising. So I just thought I'd go through how how to do that locally on your own computer because even though this post was made literally two days ago it's already been added to a github repository which you can then download and use like immediately so at the very end of this video i'll tell you how to actually install this locally but for now i'll assume that you already have um this repository installed locally and you can just go ahead and, and get moving so the repository in this case is like a variant of the web ui repository which is being used by a lot of people and we've already got it running um back here uh so all we're gonna have to do is go to the the port on which it's running and here we go we've got access to a web ui but what we're interested in doing today is some image to image stuff so first of all let's just replicate what that guy did so we'll grab the original photo that this that he that she was using actually we'll grab a slightly different photo just to make it a bit more interesting and the first thing we do is we describe the image as it is right now a photo of a middle-aged man with brown hair grinning at the camera i think that's that pretty much covers most of what we're interested in because we're going to be playing around a little bit with the age and we're going to be playing around with the hair and maybe the grinning so we sort of we state all the variables that we're thinking of shifting around we state them in this prompt so if we wanted to you know give him more ears we'd say with two ears but since we're, we're going to keep him with two ears we need to mention the ears does that kind of make sense okay uh, the next thing we do is we set the sampling steps up to 50 and we use eula instead of eula a low cfg scale forces the model to be really faithful to the image high allows it to go crazy so we want it to be really low very very low around 1.5 okay and then we get under script and we click image to image alternative test so maybe this will be slightly different by the time that you actually watch this video just go to this repository which is linked in the description at the moment i'm just going off this guide here but there might be like a different guide by the time that you reach this so we select image to image alternative test um, and that's this is the special image to image script if you just uh click none then you'll just be doing normal image to image and it'll the results will be different paste in exactly the same prompt uh we'll set the decode scale to 0.8 uh decode steps to 50 great and that will generate Okay, so by the looks of things, um, you know, this is pretty good news because it looks like we've gotten pretty much exactly the same image. Now, if you get an image that's a bit different, it probably means that everything else you're going to try to do is going to fail. So the first thing to do is just describe the photo exactly. And then um, afterwards, if this one works, then you can start making changes. Let's just start by making this very simple. We'll say black hair. We keep this prompt because this just describes what the photo was originally. And then we go ahead and generate. Ta-da! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! How cool! It's the hair is the difference, not the same color, and he's got a weird shirt. But that's the point. The very small change happened that we were interested in. Okay, different colored hair, great. Um, now let's try to change something else with a confused look on his face. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, he definitely looks a bit confused. Yeah, we can kind of put these side by side, and it does still look like the same man. I think. To me, that they look like the same dude. Now let's try something else. Let's try, he's still grinning, but we'll say a young man. See if we can like actually alter his age. Okay, well that actually did very little. You can see that these, this guy does maybe look a touch younger. Barely any difference whatsoever though. This man looks very, very slightly younger. Let's try an old man, cause you know, he did young, try old. Yeah, okay. I mean, he does look a little bit older. Okay, and you might be thinking, well, so what? You know, you can make these very minor changes to images. Who cares? What's the big deal? Well, let me show you what happens when we get rid of this. So we'll just put this on none. And we'll keep all the other parameters the same. And we'll make four of them, just to give you a better idea of what happens. And as you can see, what we actually end up with is like four completely different dudes. Which is, this is what usually happens when you try to do image to image, unless you're really careful. Okay, so that's like, that's the use case. Um, maybe let's, let's try something else. Let's try to get a bit crazy though. Yeah. A photo of an oak tree standing in the field in summer. I think this is a very classic image. And we get this, which is obviously very similar. Um, does kind of look a little bit like garbage though. And it's got all these like weird compression artifacts. But hey, you know, it still definitely looks like an oak tree. And of course, what we're going to try to do, because we're not like original or anything, is just try to make the oak tree in winter. Okay. And that, that is, that's identical. <laughs> that's completely identical. So this is, oh, so this is the summer one and this is the winter one. As we can see, there's, yeah, <laughs> not much of a difference. Let's just, let's increase this CFG scale. Let's just like ramp it up a whole bunch and see if that 
that allows us to get, I don't know, something that looks a bit more wintry. Okay, okay, I mean, like, you know, that's, that's not bad, that definitely looks more wintry, huh? I guess the question is, you know, have we lost the identity of the original oak tree? So what we'll do now, I mean, you know, arguably this is, this isn't so much better. Definitely oak trees don't actually look like this in winter, they look bare, but anyhow. Let's, let's try something a little easier. Let's try, let's try autumn. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, we definitely get an image that looks quite similar and it's got kind of the nice autumn colours in it. Um, and I guess, obviously the litmus test to perform here is you just put it back onto the normal mode and you generate the same image again. Look, to be honest, this one looks the more, most autumn-y. To be honest, I mean, I don't know if I can say with confidence that these outputs are any worse than the other one. Okay, so, like, this is the original tree. This is what we got with the new method. I don't really see that this is more similar to the original or nicer looking. In fact, this looks a bit nicer looking and I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to argue that, that it's less similar as well. So in terms of this tree thing, you know, it doesn't seem to be that great. I've tried this on a bunch of things. It seems to work pretty well on human faces. I did another one with a painting of like a Giga Chat guy and you can kind of make him smile. So that's pretty good, and I'm pretty sure, you know, it still retains his identity, so that's nice. So yeah, there's, there's clearly some uses for this out there. Hope that was useful. This took me a long bloody time to put together. Like, just fiddling around with the parameters until it all made sense and worked properly, that was a huge pain in the neck. Uh, very important, always this Eula, but you have to use this Eula. Don't use this Eula. Use the Eula, this one. <laughs> okay, okay. Installation. So. What we just did used something called Stable Diffusion Web UI, which is a really cool project with a lot of contributors. And there are a few clones of this project going around at the moment, but they all sort of run in the same way, which is number one, they will spin up Stable Diffusion on your computer. So the model is running locally on your GPU, which means you have to have a good GPU to use it. And number two, they'll create a little website, which they'll serve to your computer so that when you visit this special web address it'll be like you're visiting a normal website on the internet like github but it's actually this special website that is just connecting you with a nice user interface to the stable diffusion instance that's running on your computer so that's that's kind of how it works okay in the actual installation instructions you can find them on the repository i'm also going to link you to uh, a really good tutorial for installing web ui but the most important thing is you have to install this particular version of it, the one from automatic 11111, if you want to get this uh, alternative test, this new image to image method. If you just install a random web UI, it probably won't have that feature. So just make sure that you follow all the steps in the tutorial, but you use this repository, you pull down this one instead of uh, whatever one they ask you to pull down. Okay, once the installation process is complete, you go into the uh, folder where you've installed the repository, you double click on this web UI.bat, and then it'll start spinning up the server locally. Okay, cool, because I've installed it already, it didn't take long, so we have to go to this address. Yep, so we just visit this website here, which is like a website inside our local computer, and we can start generating prompts. Uh, and just notice, you click generate, and then if you look at the terminal, you'll see that it's also generating back here, and that shows the two are talking to each other. Okay, great, yeah, this guy, definitely super cool. 